G'day gamers, Ranger Tony here, and I'm starting a bit of a Let's Play here. Uh, this is an older game, uh, had this for a few years, didn't play it all that much, I've only got about 15 hours in it or something. Um, don't know how far I actually got through the last time I played it, but it wasn't very far, it was only three or four levels at the most. Um, this is Legend of Grimrock. Uh, it's a little dungeon crawling uh, RPG thing. Um, yeah, I'm going to play this on easy because, and I'm going to stick with the default characters that come with the game and just play around with it and see how we go. Let's uh, skip through all of this stuff as quickly as we can. I'm not here to do a, you know, minute by minute playthrough. I'm just having a bit of fun and creating some videos and gas bagging a bit while I'm playing. So this game actually invokes a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of nostalgia sort of feelings for me. It's a lot like a lot of the really early RPGs that I remember playing. Um, although this has more real-time elements in it, if you pause in one spot, the opponents don't pause. So, um, but even then, it reminds me of a lot of early games. Now, as I said, I've played it a little bit before, so I know about all the secrets and stuff like that. So, we're going to just do the standard, uh, go around and find all the secrets and everything. Um, those boots I know work well with the rogue. Let's just have a quick look at the setup of these characters, I guess. Um, so this is our human fighter. He's got okay sort of things. And he's skilled in athletics. Um, he's got swords, armors, and athletics. That's sort of the build I would do anyway, so that's fine. And we're going to definitely concentrate on swords as soon as we can find them. We have our uh, Minotaur. Um, I really would like him to have some more dexterity because that makes his accuracy better. At the moment, his accuracy is minus three. It's abysmal. Um, so we really need to improve that. Um, and he's only got one point in maces. We're not gonna put any more points in maces. This guy is gonna use axes um, and we're gonna build up his armor uh, and athletics. So at least at least to the point anyway of armor that he can, he can at least wear light armor. Um, he needs some form of protection. Um, the other option is, is I could go with unarmed combat with this guy. Um, and if I was to play this a little bit more, particularly if I got all the way through this and I wanted to do a fun build, I would probably go through and do someone who was completely unarmed combat. But I'm not going to do that at this point. Um, the rogue, good amount of dexterity, as you would expect. Skilled and agile. Um... She's got two points in daggers, which is good. She's got one point in dodge, and she's got one point in missile weapons, which I really... I don't know that I like the missile weapons all that much, because you've got to put, say, if it's a bow, you've got to have the bow in one hand and the arrows in the other, which does make sense, but it it very much limits you in options. Whereas, if I use throwing weapons, I can have a dagger in one hand and, say, a throwing dagger or a throwing star in the other, and I can do both short and long-range damage. Um, which is good. So I'm going to probably end up concentrating on assassination, which gives me these abilities for backstabbing and, and reach attacks and, and things like that, and then keep the daggers up. Um, a few points into dodge, and then a few points, a few more points into throwing weapons. Um, and then we have our mage, um, He's actually not too bad. He's got the protection from fire, so he's got the Daemon Ancestor, and he's got strong minds so to get extra willpower. Um, I'm really not sure what the best magic to go down, magic paths to go down is. Um, it sort of feels like you need to sort of spread out amongst all of them. Um, but I'm definitely going to keep going into spellcraft and buff that up. Um, now, I have played this before. I do know there's a few spells. I can remember what the first spell is, but that's about it. Um, 
I know there's a light spell somewhere, but I, I really don't remember what it was to activate it. Um, see, this does the... Whatever that is, fire burst. Um, and so that's, that's quite good. The thing that annoys me about this whole interface is that um, when you want to attack, you don't left click, you right click. But when you want to set up a spell, you don't left click here, or you can, but I tend to right, I tend to left click in, in these, uh, but you can right click instead. Um, and I've got to remember to do that because I, I, get into this habit of left clicking and then I start left clicking around here which swaps the weapons around and then I end up in a world of hurt. So I've got to remember to do that. Um, so I did play this a little bit this morning just to get back into it just sort of because I was bored and wanted to play something else. I thought you know what let's let's make a video on this. Um, and so I started again. Now I really don't remember a lot from the previous places. Uh, I should have read this first. Choose your fate, perish in the cells, or pick up the torch. Um, I don't know how long you can last down here, but you will eventually run out of food. Um, and there's really not much sense. Just sitting there if there's nothing to do. I like the sound in this game, the sound design and everything. It's, it's lovely and immersive, so hear the fire but over here you can hear that moving around and I like that I think that's really good it me of a very old game Dungeons of Daggeroth which if I can get it working on here it was an old game for the TRS-80 um, if I can get it working I may actually stream it at one point because it is a very weird old game. I'm uh, going to give this to the Minotaur first because he doesn't have much in the way of protection or evasion, so at least we have a bit of evasion here and some natural protection um, for this guy, but the Minotaur is doing really bad for protection. And we're going to give him the club at the moment because he's got maces, so he's going to get the most out of that. Um, but eventually, as I said, I want to switch him to axes. I'm just going to give you a sp give him a spare torch to carry as a weapon in the meantime. I'm swimming bare hands if I can help it. Now, give you a rock to throw. Oh, I should give you a rock to throw. No, I'll give you a rock to throw. Um. What I'm going to do, oops, it's not what I meant to do. I'm going to leave that to do get a lot more and I don't want to waste ammunition, which can be hard to come by. Um, to use to keep levers open so that I can go through doors. Um, is that the right way? Yes. Okay. Um, good, another rock. Okay, we've done everything here and we've got the key to this. I generally giving my key to the rogue. Just, you know, as a way to always remember that wherever the rogue is, that's where the keys are. Not that they can pick locks. So this was a little hint there to tell you that these loose rocks that you can sometimes see are the way to open up secrets. Um, but of course, once you've played the game once, you already know that, and you then can find that secret on the first level. Something moving back there. Yes, as I was saying, this game reminds me a lot of Dungeons of Daggeroth. Aha! A snail. Um, the thing that was 
first thing about Dungeons of Daggeron was that it did sound a lot as well. Um, I like how this game picks up the items that you dropped. I think that's really useful and really nice. Okay, we've got some boots, some pants, and a dagger. So we don't need to carry a torch anymore. We'll use the dagger instead and we'll equip these to give us a bit of extra protection. So my frontline guys are the ones who are going to need the protection the soonest. So we're generally going to give it the same first. Ah, throwing dagger. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. There are throwing stars in the game too. I sort of feel like I might have missed one. But... there was a secret here that I missed. No, it doesn't look like it. I keep an eye on the floor a lot too. There can often be little things sitting on the floor. Take another torch. Always feels like we can use extra torches. As I've said. So I often, when I come to intersections, let me come back here. I often, when I come to intersections like this, I'll look on the map and make a decision which way I'm going to go. And if it, if the intersection, if one path of the intersection heads either towards an edge of the map or back in upon itself like this, I'll go down that way because it's likely to be the shorter path. Um, and so it's worthwhile getting that out of the way because otherwise you're going to end up going all around the map and going, oh look, I missed this little bit over here and you're having to walk, you know. And you go, oh look, I missed this little spot up here. You've got to go all the way back to it. Um, okay. So this is one of these points where I've got to throw, oh, well, close the pit, something needs to fly. So I've got to throw something over there. I can throw a stone, I can throw the knife, but I've got enough torches that I'm going to throw a torch because I don't want to waste the ammunition. Ammunition can be hard to come by, at least in the early game like this. And I want to be sure I've got as much ammunition as possible. Let's just finish this area over here before we go through the door. I need to remember that there's a door. Oh, it's, it's got the icon for the door. That's good. Don't have to actually write it down. You can put markers on the map and stuff, you know, like add a note, left click, so I could click here and add a note, but I'm not going to. Uh, ooh, lots of goodies. Another rock. A baked maggot. Ooh, that sounds like so much fun. Don't know when the last time was I had baked maggot. Um... Nothing spectacular around here as far as secrets go. So, lowers my willpower but increases my attack. I guess maybe the rogue can wear the long cloth, but no one else needs it. Um, I don't want to lower the willpower of my mage if I can help it. Let's go through the door.
So I'm going to head over this way because, as you can see on the map, that's going to be... You know, this might curve back around this way, but it's, it's heading back towards where there's other things, so it's likely to be the shorter path. So we're going to go this way first. Okay, we've got these mushroom men thingies. So that you can potentially attack while they're moving towards you. Okay, that allow me to pick up all of my throwing weapons. Let's get that ready. Damn, of energy, which means the mage just can't. Do nothing at this point. If I had more weapons, I'd give him uh, a missile weapon in his off hand, maybe, rather than because of who carries the torch, isn't it? Which is always a problem. Man, there's a lot of those, mush those mushroom men. There's no, no, no secrets here. Let's just pick up some of this food. Get in there. So there wasn't anything here. There's no secrets here. We didn't explore this area very well though. Ah, look at that, a lever. That's what we want. So we need that. Something in the background somewhere. Oh, look, it opened up another secret area here, and there is a dagger. Now, eventually, actually, we'll probably stop those because I think the dagger does more damage. Eventually, we're going to give that dagger to the rogue, probably. Um, but for now, the fighter can take it because. He can use it better. So, yeah, okay. We've done everything there that we can. I don't know. I feel like I missed something somewhere. I feel like by now I had a throwing knife. Not a throwing, a throwing star. Yeah, I suck. Yeah, so I need both of those. Anyway, 
Oops, too far. Let's head on this way. Slimy little snail. weapons like that. Another rock. Scroll of firebrand, which I already know. Ooh, look, another loincloth. What's that? A cloak. what that does. Okay, here's what we need to do. I'm going to carry that squad. There we go. Uh, no, I've got to go back this way. Well, no, I've got to go back over the trap, but I just wanted to double check and make sure I didn't leave anything behind. scary going over that trap because I just you've got to wonder whether it's going to drop out from underneath you. Okay. Try to fight these guys is to actually get them on the side like that. If you can actually get behind them, it's even better. This is important because it's a shield, and that is a pike that we can use from a distance.
concerned that I missed something and it must be back over in some of these earlier areas because I know I found a throwing star when I was playing this morning. I think it was on the floor against the wall in one of these little areas where you pick up treasure. without it because they're a pretty good weapon for my road. Okay, that's the stone. Sorry, that's the torch that I'm using there. Which I'm happy to sacrifice. Unless there's a secret that I missed somewhere. There it is. I knew it was there somewhere. I was too busy talking to you about that. need to use these scrolls to learn the spells but I need earth magic to be able to learn poison cloud um, so I'm gonna leave that here this is episode one of our little let's play of legend of Grimrock I've got to remember not to call it Grimlock because that's the dinosaur from the T-Rex from uh, what's the name 
Transformers. Um, so that's going to be it for this episode, and uh, I hope you enjoy. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.